वेलकम टू एन जी पी ए सिम्पोजियम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम वेरी मच थैंकफुल टू डॉक्टर बंसी भाई फॉर ऑनरिंग एन जी पी ए बाई कीपिंग दिस एन जी पी ए सिम्पोजियम इन हिज प्रेस्टिजियस कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड ऑल्सो थैंकफुल टू हिम फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी टू चेयर दिस सेशन वी हैव थ्री टॉपिक वी हैव थ्री टॉक इन दिस सेशन फॉर फर्स्ट टॉक I invite Dr. Sahilja Kale. He is MD Medicine and MD FRCP London FSE FSCP USA. He is a professor in internal medicine and consultant diabetes. In time, one word of caution: it can coexist. So it can both the things can be there in one patient. So these are the drugs which we are aware. But just to list it, I am not going into details. But uh, we need to rule out what the patient is on drugs. Now, if you take type 2 diabetic patient almost 75 to 80 percent will be having a nafld diagnosed on ultrasound which may be fatty liver grade 1 2 etc but type 2 diabetes itself is a risk factor is a risk factor for uh, severe fibrosis so a non diabetic getting fatty liver and a diabetic person getting fatty liver there is a difference a type 2 diabetic person when he gets fatty liver he has a more chance of getting fibrosis to get end stage liver disease more cardiovascular mortality and more chances of overall mortality so in general as we see in type 2 diabetes the risk is much more just by that beta cell deficiency diagnosis whenever there is additional fatty liver and we know it's a continuum so advanced nash or advanced cirrhosis is much higher if someone has diabetes so in a diabetic clinic someone comes with fatty liver it should be should raise an alarm which is not happening so uh, patient with fatty liver or maybe nafld grade 1 to 2 they die not because of the advanced cirrhosis but they die because of the cardiovascular event 38% mortality is because of the cardiovascular event before they reach the grade 3 stage f3 stage of nash non hepatic malignancy so once there is a kind of a nash one should be aware that he, this person needs aggressive treatment for cardiovascular risk reduction and also then screening or surveillance for advanced liver disease so these are the kind of a grading done and previously it was said that once there is cirrhosis or fibrosis it is not reversible and now we have lots of studies that even a there is a fibrosis it is reversible even a partial early cirrhosis is reversible and many new drugs are also coming so that's a new knowledge in nash which is uh, showing great trials are on the way which is a good time uh, where we can really do something for these patients other than subjecting them to the liver transplant so uh, simple fact uh, and without inflammation we know it can be just a healthy liver but it can progress to the next stages where it is steato hepatitis where there is some inflammation and ballooning so the diagnosis usually is by histology by liver biopsy that's what the definition say, says now our job as a working in the clinics how to diagnose it clinically or without doing a liver biopsy that's what i will discuss in next 10 minutes so let's understand the fibrosis based algorithm for nash management so if you can see here earlier stages the mortality is because of cardiovascular or extra hepatic cancer at the late stage it's a liver related disease in between it is both so these patients with stage 0 to 1 are entirely with physicians in the clinic so the whole responsibility of a physician to prevent not only advanced liver disease but also to prevent cardiovascular events and the other thing so one needs to be extremely aware of this problem stage 1 and 2 is slightly advanced we will come to it how to diagnose them clinically you need a joint management with a gastroenterologist and a physician and for advanced stages of course we need a tertiary care kind of a care for all these patients maybe liver transplant so um, lifestyle intervention bariatric surgery has shown a great results in reversal even in up to the grade nash stage 3 it can be reversed here once it's not only weight loss but in bariatric as the glp1 goes very high which we have now glp1 studies as well we'll discuss about the drugs more when we are in the last uh, few slides after i present the clinical picture or diagnosis of nash 
So it, it is not that it progresses like this, like we see in albuminuria stage one, stage two, CKD. It can be from multiple directions. It can be diabetes, he doesn't have hypertension. On the routine checkup, BMI 26.5, his AST, ALT, OT, and PT are 58 and 49. Rest of his LFTs are normal. Count 12.5, 7,152 platelets. A1C 5.9, lipids normal, no proteinuria. Sonography showed grade one fatty liver. So if someone comes, we say, no, there must be alcohol. Uh, when have you done? Did you have some viral fever last few weeks with that slight increase? Okay, repeat it after three months. Many times patient may not come back. So what should we do when there is a gentleman like this? There is very mild raised HGPT OT and there is a grade one fatty liver, which we usually say, oh, it's both of sabko hota hai. You don't have to do anything. So really we need to be more aware of this patient. I will come to that, that what this gentleman actually has when you investigate him for NASH. He's on metformin, so what next? We need to rule out other causes of hepatitis. HOMIR was calculated 1.4, uh, it's showing some uh, resistance. Autoimmune hepatitis also one needs to work out before we subject a patient for MR elastography or some fancy investigations. Then comes fibroscan and liver biopsy. So when this person comes, what two questions one needs to ask to oneself in the clinic, does my patient have NASH based on clinical criteria? Is my patient at risk for clinically relevant liver fibrosis? So what is the chance that this patient will have fibrosis? What is the, what is the stage of this patient for NASH just by clinical diagnosis? So there is this study by Veteran Hospital which they have published a simple kind of a clinical parameters for clinical definition of NASH. So this is population management of non-alcoholic liver fat steatosis on imaging as this gentleman has fatty liver or on biopsy but also mostly on the imaging ALT more than 25 and either obesity or type 2 diabetes or dyslipidemia or metabolic syndrome this is enough for a clinical definition of NASH so this is important so one should start suspecting that this gentleman has NASH now we need to see what is the stage or grading of this now there is a lot of things which are assessed by different scans about how much is fat in the liver. So assessing the severity of the fat in the liver, ultrasound will say grade two, grade three, and for that we all feel physicians, oh grade three it is very bad, oh grade one is mild. That concept needs to be removed because the amount of fat has nothing to do with the prognosis of or kind of a developing end stage liver disease. So higher liver fat is associated with high insulin resistance and metabolic complications. So even though grade two, three fat on ultrasound, patient has to be motivated. So it helps to motivate the patient. That's all. But quantity of fat does not predict. So even the grade one fatty liver may progress to the fibrosis and the cirrhosis. That's what I mean. And that's what all the experts say that severity just helps uh, a physician to be more kind of aggressive and patient who gets motivated faster. There are some scores which we can do it on clinical basis. I have just taken one APRI score which takes into account AST level divided by upper limit of the AST divided by platelet count multiplied by 100. And this APRI score for this person, gentleman, is 0.95. If the, it is less than 0.5, it rules out advanced fibrosis. And if it is more than 1.5, it suggests cirrhosis. So this gentleman has 0.95, so we cannot ignore it. We can't say just he had some viral fever 10 days back and that's why PTOT or high, or maybe there was alcohol which he's denying. And so one needs to be very careful looking, looking into this. Then there are FIP scores, which is a bit complicated, uh, but you need to take into account along with liver enzymes albumin and uh, impaired fasting, all these parameters will give us a FIP score, which also helps for the clinical diagnosis and staging of the NASH before we subject a patient to the um, MRI or <coughs> fibro scan. So what it shows that simple biochemical parameters and a novel score, which is published by this Mumbai team, Ashish Shukla, Akash Shukla, <coughs> in the Indian Journal of Gastroenterology. Excuse me, can I have some water, please? So if we are seeing a patient of fatty liver, one needs to see the liver enzymes. Platelet count is very important. 
<coughs> and we can give a scoring with the each point. So higher the score, 75 percent chance for advanced fibrosis. So once we see fatty liver, look at the liver enzymes, do the quantification, and also see the platelet count, which is very important. So the red flag signs less than two lakhs, more than GGT, coarse liver, coarse liver, bright is only fat, the coarse echo texture, and of course liver, and then these enzymes. So this gentleman uh, was subjected a score as I said, fibroscan was 12.5. So it is not to be ignored. He has dash, uh, which is stage two or three. So a simple gentleman who, if we come in the clinic, it says ASCVD, no. So you just think he doesn't need aggressive cardiovascular risk reduction. He doesn't know hypertension, no microalbuminuria, no smoking. But he has just grade one fatty liver, and you can see that he has fibroscan 12.5, a very high risk of cardiovascular risk factor. So I'll come to this next. I just want to have two slides for saraglitazar. Uh, we know this molecule as a dual PPAR alpha and gamma agonist. This PPAR alpha action, like fibrates, has a very good effect on triglycerides and ApoA1. And then that's why it improves lipids. At the same time, PPAR gamma effect, it improves insulin sensitivity. So the main hepatocyte ballooning, excess fat among the hepatocytes, and insulin resistance. Both are tackled by this dual uh, PPAR gamma and alpha agonist saraglitazar. It has very good studies shown that in a simple trial that it improves insulin sensitivity index within four months and also we are using to treat simple type 2 diabetes as an insulin sensitizer that we all are in clinical practice. Now in last few years it has taken a great leap to show that effect on NAFLD which actually shows this study was MRI driven here on MRI, it showed a good improvement of the use of saraglitazar, and at the end of 16 weeks, 104 NAFLD patients diagnosed with MRI elastography, so which is a gold standard. So it is showing a good effect, uh, saraglitazar, at 16 weeks. And now the latest one, which was actually, this is again a biopsy-driven phase three study from India, where it, it's a one-year treatment of saraglitazar, biopsy proved patients of NASH and uh, grade stage one, two, or three, they were recruited and treated with saraglitazar for 52 weeks. And there was a progression of NASH was significantly reduced in the group which was used saraglitazar. So points for discussion for my talk are, um, one should think of lifestyle intervention. I think less than 5% improves fatty liver, less than 7% of weight loss can have a effect on uh, good in the even stage two, three, reversing of the NASH. Pyaglitazone DPP-4 inhibitors, HGLT-2 inhibitors have shown, all shown good effects. Empagliflozin has shown on the effect on the liver biopsy proven like saraglitazar, good effect. DPP-4 inhibitors, cetagliptin has shown. There are also studies with vildagliptin, but DPP-4 inhibitors, there's interesting if any questions, I will go about how the DPP-4 inhibitors act in the liver. And the great results from GLP-1 analog, I cannot end my talk unless I say this, that these incretin-based drugs are actually showing a good result for the NASH and which can help in reversing the NASH. So thank you so much. It is just that a person comes with fatty liver and ASCVD, no. We can't just rule out, we need to be aggressive. Look at the liver enzymes, look at the platelet count. We can do the APRI score and the FIP score in clinical practice and CAP fibroscan, which is available, which can be done. MR elastography is gold standard. Maybe sometimes radiologists say it is better than liver biopsy to diagnose NASH. Thank you so much. Thank you.